Testing, testing, one, two, three. You like this uh, sweater I got at the thrift store? Daisies. Well, hello there. Welcome to Artfully Sew, where we get creative with our sewing, quilting, and upcycling projects. My name is Angela, and I love to take old things and make them new. And today, our making old and something new is from something very special. Today's project involves the very first quilt I ever made. Are you ready to see it? This is the very first quilt I ever made. And I made it because I wanted to have one for my baby. <laughs> my baby is now an adult. And um, this has seen a lot of wear. And you may be wondering, why am I visiting this baby blanket? I'm gonna be a grandma. <laughs> so I thought it would be fun to take this quilt and remake it into a new quilt for my new grandbaby that's coming. <laughs> In a previous video, I went through and I showed how to restore an old quilt. I'm gonna take some of those ideas and apply it to this quilt. The backing fabric is very worn. And then I would like to use um, some fresh batting in here for the new baby. And I would like to repair some of the little holes and things that have um, happened through the years to this quilt and then quilt it on my long arm machine. The thing I have to be careful about, just like with any old quilt, because this has been used, it's been washed a number of times. Daniel used this not only as an infant, I wrapped him up in it, but then as he grew older, he, he kind of used it as a snuggly blanket. But I have to be careful that I use fabric that isn't brand new. If I put brand new unwashed fabric on here, um, when it is washed, it can pull and act really strange. So a while back during a thrift store trip, Nora and I found some fabric that was obviously older. Um, I, I already washed it up because I wanted to be fresh for the baby. <laughs> I didn't buy this intending, actually I think Nora might have been the one that bought this. I hope you don't mind Nora. My daughter, Nora, and I often go thrifting together. You should see our New York thrifting trip. If you want, try it out. I I didn't plan this. This just happened that this matches pretty well with the fabrics that are in here. So I'm gonna use this as the new backing fabric. I've also pre-washed this because this has been in the cedar chest for a long time. I wanted to freshen that up. I also have this denim fabric. And what I'm gonna do with the denim is I'm going to put a new binding on. This binding, you can see it has lots and lots of love. Look at that, it's all, it's like this along the whole edge because it was well used. And that's what we want with our quilts, right? We want people to use them. We don't want them to just sit in drawers and um, never be used. What's the point of a quilt that never gets used, right? But anyway, I'm going to use this denim then as the new binding, which will look pretty nice, huh? Like I said, I am gonna quilt it, lightly quilt it. I'm not gonna go to town on it because I like that it's so soft and snuggly. But because I know that I'm having a granddaughter, <laughs> I would like to um, add in these spots, because I'm gonna cut all of these ties off. I would like to put little embroidered flowers here and there around it so that it has um, some flowers in there. Wouldn't that be pretty? This is my collection of embroidery thread. I This is one of many that I have down here, but I'd like to pull in some of these pinky peachy colors into here with some embroidery thread on in a couple spots. You know, I'm not gonna, I don't, honestly, I don't have a lot of time. The shower is like in two weeks. <laughs> I always wait till the last minute, but I'll get it done, I'll get it done. And it helps to do this video. You're helping me, everybody, so thank you. So first step is going to be to take 
this quilt apart. I'm going to remove the ties. I'm going to take off the binding. Remove the batting. And start laying it out on the long arm machine. Oh, and I also have to make some repairs. There's just little places in here that just could benefit from a little bit of a stitch. So, um, let's get started. I always say that. What else could I say? and ready for quilting. I use a Gamel long arm to quilt my quilts, but before I had this machine, I did everything on my regular domestic sewing machine, which you can do too. As I'm looking at this quilt, I see that there's a few worn spots that I've missed when I was repairing. One of the things that's gonna help stabilize these older fabrics is the quilting. If I did a meander pattern and I just kind of grabbed each fabric, I could do a loose meandering pattern. The other thing is you can really see where those ties were because there's really open holes because that um, yarn was pretty thick. I think that's where I'm gonna put the embroidered flowers. All right, I'm just gonna start, here we go. As you can see, I went through the solid squares. So that's where I will put the little embroidered flowers. And um, I think it's gonna look really nice. I just rolled up the quilt to do the next section and look at how nicely this backing fabric matches with this quilt. I know it's not perfect, but for a chance meeting, these two are gonna be wonderful together. I finished quilting and I really like the quilting. I'm just having a come to Jesus moment here. I'm realizing that these holes are very close together. There are a lot of holes in this quilt where those ties were. It's gonna take me a long time to embroider flowers over all of those holes. And I just don't have the time. Of course, the baby shower is this weekend and it's Tuesday and I work a full-time job. So I'm thinking I might wanna change my plan. I'm all about using the resources I already own instead of going out and buying stuff. I bought this product called Chenille It. I really love it. It's a company that makes chenille. I am not Chenille It's spokesperson. I just like using their um, product. I have this yellow. Would I buy yellow for this quilt? Probably not, but it's what I have. So I'm thinking I might use it and do like a crisscross over the top of those holes. What this chenille it does is you sew it down and then I'll show you the process that I use to make a bloom, but it, it looks like chenille at the end. I just think I have to be realistic. Flowers would be really cute embroidered but they also will catch on fingernails and to little baby toenails. Um, I'm trying to talk myself out of it. I don't have enough time. So this would be a great way to do it. I am going to think about it for a little bit. 
おおこれのシンクセリも白いとおおそうすなこれしのこれしのこれうんドルドルドルドルおおすっぺがいすおおあゆじゃらすっきり always taking the limelight still is important too right well about halfway through this project I was really struggling with the vision I had originally and how it was turning out First of all, the yellow chenille it just seemed like it was too bold of a color choice for the quilt. As I was looking for thread that I was going to use to sew it on, I happened to come across this other color of chenille it I had in my drawer. It was kind of a beigey, brownish color. And so I laid that out and I really liked that look a lot better. But once I laid it out and I sewed it on and I I felt like it just kind of looked really plain. So I don't love this color and I only had enough to go one way across all of the holes, which was a great way to cover up the holes, but I just, I don't know, I'm not loving it. Um, I decided I'm I re to remove the one that I put here and then I'm going to draw a flower and do a chenille flower in the in the base here. And since daisies or brown-eyed Susans are one of my favorite flowers, I'm gonna use this brown for the center part. And this yellow, even though I felt like it was a little too yellow for the whole quilt, I think it would be cool to make a little yellow daisy in the corner. I'll make one in this corner and one in the opposite corner. I'm not gonna make one in this corner because of the way that the stripes run. So just in two corners and we'll see what it looks like. At first I tried to freeform it where I fed the chenille it through the presser foot, but it was really hard to predict where to put that and I tried drawing out it with chalk and it just wasn't doing well. So the second flower I, I pinned it in exactly where I wanted to go and I was able to sew that on that side a lot quicker. added those flowers I felt a lot better about the way the quilt was turning out. I still really miss the thought of those embroidered flowers but overall with the time limits I had it was a good it was a good choice. One of the things I struggled with the most was adding the binding. Originally I had planned on using that denim fabric to cut strips to make binding to go around the outside of the quilt but time was ticking. I was running out of time. That shower was right around the corner and I didn't know what I was gonna do. So I do what I do almost every day. I consulted my friends, Allison and Ruth. Allison and Ruth are my very good friends from college who have helped me out with other projects in the past. Okay, so you know, my whole thing with my videos is, is that I'm reusing things, remaking things, using the things I already have. I have um, fabric that I could make a binding, but it's gonna take me a couple hours to make it. I could just go to Joanne Fabrics and buy pre-made binding, but it just feels like it goes against what I stand for, and that is using what I have. Um, I have fabric I could use to make the binding at home sitting there washed. It's just a matter of cutting it. It's going to be a lot of work and I don't have a lot of time. Am I really breaking some rule that I opposed on myself? That is it that important? How important is it? How important is it that this binding is handmade from fabric that I have in my stash? It's not that important. 
I think it's more important. What's more important is finishing it on time. Like you said, Ruth, I don't want to go to the shower empty-handed. Okay, that's it, girls. I'm going to Joanne Fabrics to buy pre-made binding. How important is it? Easy. I feel good about this decision. Thanks for helping me through, girls. So, the important thing was that I finished the quilt on time for the shower. And this is how it turned out. This is a picture of Daniel when he was little with his quilt in his, in his crib. As you can see, the fabrics look a lot brighter those ties are fresh and new. And I even used some of the fabric to make a baby bumper to go around the crib. And here's what the quilt looks like today. The flowers are my favorite that I added in the corner. They just add a nice little freshness and newness to the quilt. Even though I didn't make the binding by hand, the quilt is finished. It has a binding and I'm sure I will find another use for that denim fabric. Remaking this quilt was a lot of fun. I'm so glad I was able to take something that Daniel had as a baby and make it into something new for his baby. And even though I didn't get to use my embroidery threads, I did end up adding flowers to the quilt, just in a different way. I think that's the biggest thing I learned from this project. Oftentimes I have a vision of how I think things are gonna turn out and things don't always go the way that you want. In fact, in life, most things seldom go the way that you want in life. Isn't it true? And that's what I did in this quilt. It turned out very differently from what I pictured, but I still love it and I'm still very excited to give it to them for a shower gift. So I hope that you have learned to give yourself grace when you're making new projects. We're so glad that you've watched our video today. Right, Stella? <laughs> And remember, you can artfully sew. So just keep on sewing. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I think Stella wants to do a trick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sit. Okay, go around. <laughs> there you go. If you liked this video, maybe you should try out this one. Or maybe this one right here. Go ahead, click on it. Try it out, watch it. Bye.